Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Perspective. We'll be talking about, of course, the recent changes uh, on the political spectrum that we've seen, uh, the political and uh, economic challenges for the new government. We've seen uh, Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif uh, have uh, numerous meetings with the Advisory Council on Economic Affairs to discuss uh, the economic situation of the country, where and how uh, the gov uh, government plans to take the economy at this time. Considering the situation, we'll be talking about that. We'll also be talking about, of course, the DJ ISPR's conference and the PTI's narrative. Uh, the fact that, of course, they are on the roads again, the protests and the narrative building from uh, the opposition, it seems, uh, with uh, vis -vis, of course, the resignations of uh, the PTI members that have been accepted now, uh, whether that decision also is going to be beneficial for the party as a whole, uh, leaving uh, the assembly uh, completely free of any uh, credible opposition at this time. All of those things today um, on perspective. I have with me today uh, Rafiq Rajwanasab from the PMLN, uh, Taj Heather from the PPP, and uh, Javed Sadiq Saab, who is a political analyst. I'll start off with Rafiq Rajwana Saab. Ji, Rajwana Saab, overall, we are seeing, uh, you know, the way that the changes have happened uh, on the political spectrum. How do you see the situation now in terms of, let's talk about the resignations, uh, firstly. As far as the PTI resignations are concerned, according uh, to the deputy speaker at this time, he has about 125 or 123, if I'm not wrong. How do you think? How do you feel as a politician? You know, uh, how do, how do you look at these resignations? How do you look at this development overall uh, for the PTI and for the National Assembly overall? Uh, because it leaves you, uh, the PDM, the joint uh, you know government at this time without any credible opposition. Thank you so much. Uh, I personally feel that uh, instead of uh, resignation because there was a democratic process to oust the former prime minister from the office of prime minister under article 95 it was a no confidence motion duly blessed by the supreme court of pakistan and it was the right of the parliamentarians who had given the uh, given the uh, vote of confidence some of them when he was elected as a prime minister mr imran khan and now uh, he has been ousted from the office of the premiership uh, on the basis of no confidence. Now, I think that the parliament is incomplete without opposition. Hmm. Opposition has to play a very important role as compared to the role of the treasury benches. Hmm. And according to my thinking, as having uh, the experience of the parliament twice of the upper house, hmm. that they should have a better. Uh, remain mm. in the house, mm. keep an eye and watch on the working of the treasury benches, the government, mm. it is a coalition government, and mm. they would have played their role effectively by criticizing, by having constructive criticism on the policies and decisions of the mm. government and mm. uh, helping in legislation in the parliament. Instead mm. of, they have all uh, resigned. Mm. Rather, they have not uh, uh, resigned according to the wishes of the people, their mm. electorate. It was not mm. a demand from the electorate. Had the mm. electorate uh, demanded that they should resign, then they should have res resigned. Mm. They have rather uh, defeated the uh, confidence imposed by their, by their electorate in them by electing them, irrespective mm. of the previous claim by us that it was not an election, it was a selection. The time has gone so far. Right, let me no. Ji, yes. Rajwana sahab, let me come back to you. We have with us Ali Muhammad Khan from the PTI. Uh, ji, uh, Mr. Khan, overall, as far as this decision is concerned, you I hope I don't know if you've been hearing Rajwana sahab. Don't you think that you're leaving uh, you're, you're leaving the assembly like this uh, is going to suit uh, the government at this time? Bismillah <coughs> rahman rahim Thank you so much. I've been listening to Mr. Rajwana. My regards to him. Um, well, we, I would not uh, uh, agree with the line which is being given here because uh, if it had been a uh, normal routine government in which uh, there is an election and the government is formed and the natural process is that uh, some of uh, the people have to sit uh, on the right side of the aisle, some of them have to sit on the left. 
but in the present system, when actually and truly uh, in board and spirit, when there's a hybrid regime, which is orchestrated from abroad, which is uh, elaborated by the uh, communique uh, of, the, of the joint statement of the National Security Council, that it is basically a regime which is the outcome offshoot of uh, uh, international orchestrated uh, blatant interference in the in internal affairs of Pakistan. So how can uh, elected people, elected, um, the elected government, the truly elected government, how can they give uh, legitimacy to this regime? <clears throat> so it was a policy decision that we would not like to give the politi political legitimacy to Shabash Sharif Saab's government because we feel that it is something which has been orchestrated by, uh, by the foreign powers. Uh, mm -hmm. Sadly, uh, very sadly, uh, people like Shabash Sharif, uh, he was the ex-CM of Punjab, and uh, many more like him, many more political workers like him, Willingly or unwillingly, they have become part of this whole regime change. I'm Ali, not saying that any Ali, one of them. You know, is overall, important. we saw the prime minister. Uh, you know, the former prime minister Imran Khan saying that he will play till the last ball. Before the no confidence motion was tabled, one of the, you know, one of the options that was at least being discussed on the media was for him to resign. But he chose not to do that. For now, you know, for him to resign, and now for for all of your party, most of your party, <laughs> to resign like this, doesn't that sort of uh, is, isn't that contrary to what was said earlier on? Well, uh, ex-Prime Minister of Pakistan, Mr. Imran Khan, who is the real Prime Minister, he played to the last ball. He didn't re resigned. We fought till the last day, and I was one of the last men standing there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if now, if you think about Mr. Shabazz Sharif, probably he would also, in the heart of his heart, would not like to lead a, a government which is uh, like uh, that of a, a whole cricket team. There are so many, many, many allies, which is basically... Uh, as they were alleging uh, us, now the truly hybrid regime is this one, because um, even Muslim League noon, uh, before all this debacle, they were demanding the election. So probably the way forward for all the, uh, the stakeholders is to go for the election as soon as possible and uh, put an end to all this saga. It's a sad tale. It, it was not a happy... It, it was, we don't have happy memories of what had happened in the last uh, one odd year, uh, odd month, because opening of the Honorable Supreme Court at uh, midnight and uh, that of the Honorable Islamabad High Court, which was being mm. referred mm. by the Honorable uh, Ex-Prime Minister of Pakistan, Mr. Imran Khan, mm. the day before yesterday, the Peshawar Jalsa. Mm. All these mm. things, um, um, all these things don't refer to normalcy. So I think probably the way forward, which Imran Khan Saab is demanding, which our Jalsa and the people of Pakistan are demanding, that we don't want any uh, imported regime. We reject any imported regime and we want a new fresh election. Let and me come back to you. Let me, Ji, let me come back to you. Please stay with us. I'm going to go to Taj Heather from the BPP. Ji, uh, Heather Sab, overall, we've been talking about the resignations from uh, the PTI. Um, in terms of your own party, as far as the PPP is concerned, first we were hearing about how, you know, as far as cabinet ad adjustment is concerned, as far as taking different portfolios is concerned, um, your is it complete as far as the uh, the PMLN and PPP is concerned at this time? Uh, you know, have things been decided? What is the situation overall as far as the government is concerned? Formation of it. No, I mean, uh, nobody can stop anybody from resigning his office. Uh, mm -hmm. But in the present shape, the resignation standard by the Honorable PTI members are not mm -hmm. valid. Mm -hmm. And that notification by the acting speaker who is himself uh, on a no confidence motive uh, motion doesn't uh, hold ground uh, also since a new speaker has been elected and then the speaker has to satisfy himself that the uh, honorable member who is resigning who is resigning uh, out of his own uh, uh, free will without any coercion that he has forced him to resign mm. and it's only then and of course the resignation has to be in his own hand, uh, mm. bear his signatures, and uh, mm. he has to satisfy the speaker that uh, he is resigning from uh, by his own will. Otherwise, mm. the uh, resignation is not uh, acceptable. Mm. So, uh, in the present shape, the resignations mm. are not valid. Now, everybody, the entire nation admired no, but, Mr. Ali but, Mahmoud Khan. As far as the Deputy Speaker is concerned, he's accepted the resignations. And now, as I understand it, they will go to the Election Commission, right? Are not valid. 
because there is a procedure laid down in the rules of the assembly for uh, uh, giving a resignation and for accepting a resignation. Mm. And the speaker has to talk uh, with the individual members who are resigning and satisfy mm. himself and then okay. uh, issue a notification. Okay. They cannot be given in an omnibus style like uh, these have been given. And also, I think the speaker, uh, he has a uh, uh, no confidence motion against him, which has to be decided uh, by the assembly. So a person having a no confidence motion against him uh, mm -hmm. cannot uh, take decisions uh, which affect the mm -hmm. uh, the constitution of the uh, assembly. And okay. the no confidence motion against Mr. Suri is mm -hmm. for constitu violating the constitution mm -hmm. repeatedly. Now, uh, all these things can be decided by the uh, new speaker who has already been elected. And as I said, nobody can stop anybody from resigning. And if those 23 members really want to resign, uh, they can uh, follow the due procedure okay. and resign from the assembly. And new elections can be held on the vacant seats. Hmm. But in the right. present year, the mm -hmm. resignations are not valid. Okay, let me let me let's uh, let me uh, come back to you on that point. I have with us Javed Sadiq also. Uh, Javed sir, uh, we've been talking about the resignations of uh, you know uh, the PTI members, and according to Tad sir, he's saying that uh, I, I would like to get a lawyer's uh, you know input on exactly what the situation is with regard to the resignations. But overall, he's saying that they will not be valid according to him because the deputy speaker has a vote of no confidence against him at this point, and for the new speaker to come in and then. Then, uh, you know, call the, the members in question, ask them, and then they will go forward. How do you see it? Do you think it's procedural? Do you think it also has to do with the fact that there were rumors earlier on that not all the resignations uh, were genuine or, you know, they were, uh, some of the members were under pressure at the time when the resignations were tendered? All sorts of uh, theories are afloat hmm. uh, for the time being. Hmm. And uh, the, the, yes, the deputy speaker, there's a no confidence motion against him moved and therefore he has, doesn't have the power to forward uh, mm -hmm. those resignations to the ECP. Secondly, you know, uh, the procedure requires that each member should appear before the speaker mm -hmm. and verify that he has submitted resignation and he owns it. Mm -hmm. So that is another procedure. The third um, theory that is mm. uh, taking mm. rounds is mm. that the PTI chief is using these, uh, ca this card of resignations to put pressure on the, the current government or on the government that has succeeded mm. the PTI. Mm. So I think... Uh, but uh, how does this put pressure on the new government in your opinion? I mean, I mean <coughs> by-elections, they're saying that, you know, they will, of course, it's a huge number of by-elections. Yeah. But nevertheless, it's it's something that but can But you see, be uh, no doubt that uh, uh, as a consequence to this vote of confidence, mm. or no confidence against the former prime minister, a new government is there. Mm. But... Uh, the resignation, mass resignation of 132 or uh, 130 uh, MNAs hmm. is not a joke. Hmm. I mean, half of the house almost is not there. But they're so, leaving them with, with no opposition. Isn't exactly. that going to suit them better? Exactly, the that is true. But you know, the, the moral authority hmm. also matters. And you have to go for, uh, you know, fresh hmm. polls, hmm. by polls. To, you and know, also fill legislation these seats. And, and electoral and all reforms, things. all so, of those you things. You know, all these kind of things are going to create a crisis. Mm. The political uh, pundits or the political analysts believe that the only way out of this crisis is to go for fresh, fresh elections. elections yes. And this uh, new government is saying that after the electoral reforms, they will also announce elections. So uh, the, the things are moving towards new elections maybe by the end of the year or early hmm. year, uh, early next year, so that, you know, this crisis is averted. Let me come back to you. I want to go to Ali Muhammad Khan. Ji, Ali, uh, overall, as far as this issue of resignations are concerned, do you agree? You think that there will be, because, you know, there seems to be this opinion that uh, as far as, uh, cast, you know, uh, Suri Saab is concerned, he has uh, a vote of no confidence pending against him. There is 
the new speaker will come he will call the members he will then affirm uh, that uh, they will then affirm that they want to resign and which then you know the procedure will then take course do you think that there's any credence to the fact that there are members who have resigned uh, because of the pressure overall uh, you know can you can you uh, update us on that and there might be some resignations that uh, you know they might be uh, back out of there might be members from your party Can you hear me? Okay, there's a problem. G, uh, I'm going to go to Rafiq Rajwana Sab. Rajwana Sab, do you think there's likely uh, to be members that may, uh, you know, renege on this uh, uh, the this resignation, the, the the resignations that have been tendered um, in the National Assembly from the PTI members? Actually, there is a legal proposition and there is a judgment of the Supreme Court of hmm. Pakistan. Hmm. that while uh, submitting a resignation it should hmm. be hand written i okay. was governor of, i was governor of punjab in previous regime and hmm. the resignation of the governor is to be written by his own hand writing i okay. wrote my resignation with my own hand writing but there is hmm. another academic question that these resignations are so commonly known that it, these have been announced in the house it is being discussed every day on the channels so i think that if anybody who had some reservation that he has mm. not been called to verify my resignation or it was not in his own handwriting i think mm. that it loses its significance for the obvious reason that it is a notice to the public at large as well as particularly to that uh, honorable member of the parliament who has resigned mm. that it is being announced that this is the list of the respected members who have resigned from their uh, office mm. of uh, the national assembly so mm. i think that the purpose of resignation has been accepted the purpose which the pti had in their minds or the plan which they had in their minds i would at the cost of reiteration say that the purpose of resignation should not be undemocratic they should have been in the parliament and as far as the question of the conspiracy is concerned without further dilating upon that the explanation mm. of the ispr is quite clear on that number 1 number 2 there is another mm. development there is there was a no confidence motion in assembly of ajk azad jammu and kashmir where yes. the pti is in the government okay now the prime minister has resigned there is mm. no allegation of horse trading from mm. the government but there was an mm. allegation of the outgoing prime minister who has resigned mm. some people from that uh, mm. group had raised some allegations subject to mm. all mm. exceptions so mm. there is i think that it should be conspiracy of the united states of america that the no mm. confidence motion has also been moved over there let's go forward for mm. the nation let's let's mm. not mislead the nation let's mm. lead the nation the job mm -hmm. of the leader the duty of the leader is to lead the nation not to mislead mm -hmm. it not to create mm -hmm. vacuum let the elected prime minister work and definitely the election will not be on the schedule according to my humble view subject to the decision what is taken by the government at the consultation okay. of the allies and the general election would be very soon let the thing be settled by the present regime and the working of mr shahbaz sharif the former uh, uh, twice uh, chief minister of punjab i hope mm. we will deliver something within the shortest possible time let's cooperate right. with each other for the betterment of the people i would request to the people of pti that let's cooperate with each other and wait for your turn if the people repose their confidence in majority to you you can again come back with respect right, let me come back to you ji rafiq sahab i will let me come back to you we have with us arif choudhury uh, who is a legal expert uh, also an eminent lawyer i'm going to go to him uh, arif sahab we've been talking about the resignations of uh, uh, the pti members at this time the fact that of course there are uh, you know some 123 uh, of them uh, of, you know for the deputy speakers already said that he's ex accepted those resignations the question is that at this time uh, according to uh, taj haider sahab has also talked about it and i think the some of the opposition mem uh, government members are now saying that as far as the resignations are concerned because he has a no conference motion pending against him he doesn't have the authority to either accept or reject those resignations uh, before they go to the election commission um, how do you look at it what is the legal position overall 
thank you very much first of all uh, what you have said that you know no motion is pending against the deputy speaker and he cannot accept the uh, the resignation he must think about uh, the situation where he presided over uh, the uh, all the all the behind the sessions that uh, you know and uh, even a bit before that there was a you no know, confidence motion against him and until and unless a notice proper notice of uh, no confidence motion is given uh, in, in the assembly uh, the speaker or the deputy speaker he carries on continues to be in a uh, a position on his seat so i don't think that is there is any problem with respect to acceptance of resignation by the the deputy speaker because there is no speaker and you know in the absence of the speaker overall i mean of course and in terms of the procedure can you tell us a little bit about that because now they will of course if he's accepted them and you are saying that for all intents and purposes it doesn't matter as far as the no confidence motion is concerned then they go to the election commission right uh, will at, at the election commission then call all the members and confirm is that what happens the only day you know if they have any doubt that any one of them has you know been uh, non suited you know for uh, and has not been you know consulted before the acceptance of the resignation that you know because that is the most important thing that you know whether the resignation is for a tree or it is under question or one you know who resigns from his uh, notice of resignation you know that we need to talk but yeah, in and this particular overall case, i mean when we uh, when when the resignations were tendered the way uh, the show of unity uh, you know after the resignations the way that the members walked out all of those things for all intents and purposes it seems that there is uh, there was unity unless some member you know uh, chooses to actually go to the election commission and say that they didn't mean it or there was pressure all of those things it seems like those resignations at this time are genuine right you are absolutely right because you know until and unless somebody you know uh, attacks you know challenges uh, the position that you know i was not uh, you know the one who made the signatures and i was not uh, uh, you know uh, privy to this designation mm -hmm. that that is the only situation where you know that can be considered that you know even the election commission can see mm -hmm. and he, he can summon that person and you know uh, can record his statement and you know mm -hmm. uh, similarly you know as uh, the one who has accepted uh, the designation under what circumstances he accepted the uh, designation that can be checked but right now i don't think there is any you know iota of doubt as far as these designations are concerned so far nobody has raised any voice and you know this is the opinion of the former speaker samida mirza also that you know as he was he was there for a complete tenure as a speaker of the assembly and he was also in the of the opinion that you know uh, as nobody had raised his voice and nobody has said that you know the resignation was not was at least so uh, every and they, even there is no uh, no allegation of such thing you know even uh, in the media by any one of them are those who have done so there is no question about uh, the you know veracity of those uh, resignations they are for all intents and purposes they are the resignation let me come back to you uh, arif sahab I, i will come back to you i want to go to taj haider sahab ji uh, haider sahab overall do you think that in terms of building pressure is concerned in terms of you know we saw the peshawar jalsa that happened yesterday there is one in lahore and then you know there seems to be a, you know there there has been a schedule announced as far as the pti is concerned overall do you think in terms of building pressure in terms of the crowds that the pti is drawing at this time do you think that it is uh, going to be uh, uh, an added pressure for the government to handle because of course you know there are numerous challenges economic challenges are certainly there there's also the issue of legislation uh, you know as far as the joint uh, government at this time is concerned they all want to work on the electoral reforms agenda so there are numerous challenges challenges confronting uh, the government at this time which comprises of a number of political parties do you think that is also going to amount to another challenge for the government the way you know the pace of course will determine what happens as far as the pti is concerned but we are seeing do you think they will be able to maintain it overall what is your opinion about it 
No, I mean, uh, uh, I've spoken about the resignation part, and uh, the very fact that the resignations are being dressed shows that uh, members are not acting on their free will. Uh, after all, and the speaker will be in the new speaker will be in the office uh, tomorrow morning, and uh, the procedures can follow. Uh, but as far as the program of the government is concerned, uh, well, I don't see uh, any problems for this government because uh, they are uniting the nation and they are uh, uh, taking decisions with consultations. They are trying to find solutions. Uh, I only wish that they didn't waste their time in replying to the allegations and the propaganda of uh, the previous government. Uh, that's what I tell my ministers in Sindh also, that why are you watching television all the time and replying to them? I say you must uh, find uh, time for uh, doing your work. And that is what really counts. And uh, Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif uh, is giving all his time uh, to some solid work and consulting uh, colleagues and uh, looking at ideas that are being put forth. Uh, that's the secret. Uh, of uh, any government uh, finding solutions, uh, giving relief to the people, and the decisions that he has taken in the economy. I mean, what we know, uh, he has been in office for only three days. The decisions that he has taken are giving a new direction to our economy. Like uh, the increase in wages does increase the buying power of uh, by the working people. And unless you increase the buying power of the working people, the economy cannot take off. Growth is impossible if people have no money in their pockets. Right. That's uh, I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. Ji, Javid, sir, uh, what, what's your opinion about it? You heard Taj Hedasabi saying that it doesn't matter as far as, uh, you know, the narrative of uh, the opposition PTI. at this time, PTI is concerned. It doesn't matter about the crowds they're drawing. It doesn't matter about the narrative that they're trying to put forward. Of course, we have to see it in the DJ ISPRs, in the light of the DJ ISPRs uh, denials, his conf uh, yeah. you know press conference also. But barring, even if we leave that aside, in terms of an opposition that comes out on the roads, um, that's not new to yeah. Imran Khan. And the way that, you know, if, if that pace, do you think it can prove difficult for the government? It can Certainly be Certainly, it, it is posing a challenge and will mm. be posing a challenge for uh, the government. Mm. And uh, Imran Khan is, uh, you know, is always used this card, mm. this street pressure card, uh, you know, his famous dharna of uh, many hundred uh, days here mm. in front of the parliament mm. during the Nawaz Sharif government is well known. Mm. So he is uh, intending to use this street pressure mm. uh, in order to engage the government and distract this government from the job that it wants to do. Already the economic challenge is huge. Mm. Uh, you know, the inflation mm. uh, and, uh, and also the depleting foreign exchange reserves, mm -hmm. the falling uh, foreign exchange reserves, mm -hmm. and also the direct foreign investment in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. the, the dollar is stable, but still the political situation is not that stable and solid mm -hmm. so that, you know, the dollar uh, also uh, rupee gains against dollar. Mm -hmm. So these are the challenges uh, for the new government. But, but the, in terms of in terms of as far as the PTI is concerned, he is you know it seems like the party is uh, certainly f in full election mode for exactly. them. You know they also and they will try. For... They will try to gear up for this mm -hmm. election and they will motivate and mobilize the people so mm -hmm. that a psychological environment is created for fresh elections. Mm -hmm. I think this government is mindful of that mm -hmm. and the strategy of uh, Imran Khan is basically to uh, force elections, early elections on this mm -hmm. government because mm -hmm. after his ouster from power through mm -hmm. this vote of no confidence, mm -hmm. uh, the, the rallies that he has heard, uh, mm -hmm. one in Peshawar and before that, also, you know, they are a clear indication that he has been able to sell the idea mm. that some foreign power is involved in his ouster from power. Mm. So uh, that he's trying to play mm. and he's, he's going to play in future as well. So he's trying to force elections on this current government. I, I want to talk about, uh, let me come back to you, I'm going to go to Rafiq Rajwana. Rajwana, do you think that, you know, uh, he's going to be able 
to maintain this momentum one and you know Ta Taj Hedisab is saying he's saying that it shouldn't be uh, instead of replying to to what is being said by the opposition at this time the PTI at this time Imran Khan at this time it shouldn't matter the goal should be working for the economy working for the betterment uh, of Pakistan at this time and uh, regardless of the kind of narrative that is coming from uh, the opposition at this time but overall do you think that uh, building momentum and continuing it can uh, pose to be a problem for uh, Imran Khan and PTI? Uh, Imran Khan has been voted out from the parliament. He has Jeez. each and every every right to to approach mm. to approach his electorate mm. as a political leader. He mm. has at liberty to address to Jalsas, to have meetings, mm. to mm. get ready or to motivate the people for the next general election. This is one mm. part of his activity. I would request only one thing, that it is his right, but instead of misleading, he should lead the people, he should lead the nation, he should lead the youngsters, number one. Number two, mm. what the DPISPR said, it is very important, mm. without going in further detail. As far mm. as the working of the government is concerned, we mm. have no concern whatsoever Mr. Imran Khan is doing or what he will do till the time they don't take law into hand, they don't mm. don't disturb mm. political system mm. of the country, mm. they don't disturb the smooth working of the parliament. And mm. as far as the present regime is concerned, they are working within such possible short time, whatsoever can be done, they are trying mm. their utmost with collective wisdom with the mm. collective discussions as with the collective decisions. So this mm. is the crux of the matter. Political mm. activities, we have the right to go to the people. Imran Khan mm. is doing his uh, job and he has the, each and every right to address the mm. Jalsas to go anywhere he likes. He's a political leader, he has a political party of following. Right. Let okay. him do what, but he should, mm. he should talk the factual position. He should not play to the gallery. He should right. not... Okay. Depend upon well, I think I thing. think he is going to play to the galleries because he wants to. He's in election mode and he wants to play, of course, to his people. He wants to uh, go. He, it seems to be the party is in full election mode over there. Let me come back to you, Radwana Sab. I'm going to go to uh, Arif Chaudhary Sab. Arif Sab, are you with us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arif Sab, I want to uh, over as far as uh, you know the legal landscape is concerned. We've seen. Uh, the vote of no confidence which was then you know uh, of course the recourse to supreme court also the lahore high uh, high court co is involved as far as uh, you know the yeah. uh, uh, the election of uh, chief minister speaker in punjab is concerned at this time we also saw the involvement of uh, the high islamabad high court also the the case that was heard today overall as far as uh, you know the legal landscape is concerned do you do you, do you think a lot more litigation will Will follow in your opinion as a lawyer uh, do you think that there will be as far as uh, you know across the board political parties are concerned we're also we've also heard that PTI intends to go against uh, the delimitation uh, as far as you know against the election commission to court also do you see a lot of lit litigation coming forward uh, from the political circles uh, involving the court in a lot of political questions how do you see it yeah it's a very good question rather it speaks itself Transfers itself. As far as uh, one thing is concerned, which you know, one of the participants who said, you know, the new speaker will take over tomorrow and you know, the matter will be for it. I don't think that this can be reopened, but it doesn't depend upon uh, the person who uh, is going to occupy the seat as speaker. It is the one who was at that point in time and he took a decision. So it is a past and closed transaction as far as the matter which the before the speaker so it cannot be reopened before the new speaker as uh, the government. Mm -hmm. But as far as the litigation part of this question is concerned, there is no doubt about that. That you know, the prior to this, uh, the uh, Article 69 has been was being followed in particular sense. So and you know, in uh, the courts uh, were very hesitant. Uh, to enter into this arena, and one one part of this, uh, the one reason for this was also that, you know, mm -hmm. they didn't want to open a Pandora box, and they didn't want to open floodgates of litigation that, you know, uh, every time any problem arises in the House uh, of Parliament, uh, the matter immediately goes to 
these uh, the courts, which are already overburdened by the offending uh, decisions before that. So, and there are so many questions and uh, fingers are being raised by so many people on the street that, you know, they are not dealing, uh, doing their job as far as the, uh, the litigation of government is concerned and they are entering into another arena, which is purely the domain of politicians and the parliamentarians. So I think, you know, that's a really very troubling part of the, you know, of this issue. Because, you know, this has opened a new, uh, a new distance. And as far as my uh, friend was concerned, uh, the uh, former governor of Rwanda, that, you know, uh, as far as he is always a very, you know, a balanced and neutral person, you know, as far as opinion is concerned, so I really appreciate. But one thing we should not keep, uh, lose sight of that, you know, the crowds which are being pulled by uh, Imran Khan and the narrative which is now not only being accepted and, you know, being uh, taken uh, very seriously by uh, by uh, few people, but it is the common man on the street and the irrespective of his uh, uh, background, wherever he has, he has forgotten all those what was happening during his regime. You know, there were so many things which we have been discussing prior to this, that, you know, mixed governance, bad governance, and mm-hmm. so many issues. But now people are talking about one thing. And I don't think that, you know, uh, ISPR, you know, is uh, one uh, to, you know, uh, settle the, the dust. Because, you know, they are not, as far as the establishment is concerned, nobody should expect anything from them as far as this message is concerned. Because people should try to avoid this, you know, bringing them in. Because, you know, they are not supposed to take a stand on the, uh, you know, on this issue, because they have to run the state, they appear the uh, state, and state, you know, cannot be party as far as political issues are concerned. This matter has two dimensions. One is with, uh, with the state, and one is with the government. As far as the state is concerned, they are very cautious about this issue that, you know, we cannot afford any velocity with any foreign power, and we should not take any stand which can antagonize that further. But as far as the government is concerned, you know, the one who has been ousted from the government, you know, he has uh, uh, put his case before the people of Pakistan and people of Pakistan around the world, you know, at their own, without any leadership and without any, uh, you know, instigation from any side. They are jumping to the conclusion that, you know, this ouster was not uh, a, a normal thing. It was not, uh, you know... Javed Sab, uh, you've been hearing Arif Sab. What do you? How do you look at it? Of course, you know the ISPR was. Ca- you know he he went out of his way. He was quite categorical in saying that you know neutrality perhaps is not the right word. Apolitical is perhaps a better word as far as uh, you know overall the in- involvement of the establishment uh, in in politics is concerned. That being said, overall the situation, uh, it, the the political landscape being what it is, do you agree with RSF? You think that you know, in terms of, of course, misgovernance, the issues of economy, um, you know, as far as Punjab is concerned, of course, the ouster and and the yeah. criticism against the Punjab Chief Minister Bazar Sab, all of those things, do you feel that they've gone into the background now uh, because of uh, the narrative that the PTI has put forward, or because of the ouster of the the former Prime Minister overall? I think. Uh, <coughs> Uh, Imran Khan has been able to uh, sell this idea hmm. to the people and particularly the youth of the country. Uh, but do you think he'll be able, okay, you know, even you know, he has been able as to far give, as the momentum is concerned, yeah, the, you know? he has been able to give this impression hmm. that his ouster hmm. is not uh, in accordance with the uh, constitution of Pakistan, though it is. I mean, this is perfectly yes. ec- uh, within the parameters mm. of constitution. Mm. A mm. vote of no confidence was presented against mm. him, mm. Uh, tabled in the parliament, mm. and he lost it. Uh, but uh, he said that he will fight to the last ball. Mm. And he actually committed so many mistakes. Mm. Uh, even he violated law and constitution. A and lot is being said about the fact yeah. that, of course, if resignation was going, as exactly. far as resignations so I think are concerned, he could have done his, it sooner or his, perhaps. Uh, yeah, some of his, uh, mm. you know, assertions have been denied mm. uh, by the DGISPR. Uh, he said yes. that the establishment came with three proposals mm. with the, regarding his resignation, mm. re-election. And they're saying and the counter, exactly. you know. So is, th- that has been proven wrong. Uh, but I think uh, that Imran Khan 
uh, is uh, trying to convince the people and he has been able to muster the support hmm. of the electorate, a young, particularly young people, hmm. that something wrong has been done to him. Hmm. Although it has not been done to him, but he has been able to convince them. Hmm. So he's trying to capitalize on that hmm. and is, uh, uh, you know, <coughs> mobilizing people and he thinks that he'll be able to muster the support of the majority and will be able to force elections on this government, ele early elections on the government, hmm. and he thinks that he will he right, can make a comeback. Right, unfortunately, that's all the time that we have. Thank you so much for being with us, Javed Siddiq Saab, Rafiq Rajwana Saab, Taj Haider Saab, Ali Mohammed Khan. Thank you for joining us. Of course, we are seeing uh, the opposition mobilize. We are seeing them, you know, go into election mode. We are seeing them call out for elections. But at the same time, it remains to be seen how far uh, that uh, will, as far as uh, the momentum is concerned, how long they can keep it going in, uh, in the face of a government that is now saying that they're committed to only and only focusing on uh, the betterment of the economy, um, reform, uh, and the agenda of a better Pakistan. Both those things side by side we'll know, of course, in the next few months, uh, how far the narrative of the opposition succeeds and also uh, in terms of the success that the government, this joint uh, government will have in terms of tackling the, the obstacles in its way. Thank you so much for joining us today on Perspective.